It's Monday, October 1st, 2012, and let's talk about what happened this weekend over at xdadevelopers.com. Yes, I realize I sound like something across between a smooth jazz DJ and a serial killer, but let's go ahead and move past that. First off, the device update news. This weekend we saw an unofficial signage on 10 port for the Samsung Galaxy S Plus. That is the i9001 if you're not familiar with it, like I am not really. It is still a little bit shaky and not everything's quite set in stone yet, it's not 100%. That is quite the norm for these alpha builds that we're seeing at this point. Although the list of things they've mentioned that aren't working are kind of short in my opinion, and it, it may just be something that they haven't put a whole lot of detail into. It says headset, audio, the camera, the full butter experience, although it says that it's at about 60%, and many other things, which means I don't know what. I haven't read the thread. I don't really know at this point. One way or another, if you have that Galaxy S Plus and you're interested in having Jelly Bean running on it, or at least some form of Jelly Bean, you do have an unofficial port. Somebody's working on it, and I'm sure the community will be helping out and making it better. And that's thanks to XTA forum member Demon434, by the way. There's also a new unofficial port of AOKP to the Samsung Galaxy Tab 8.9, and that is thanks to XDA senior member Dan HTC Touch. It, as per all of the other ones, is not 100% rock solid stable, but it does appear to be a lot farther along than some others that we've seen. Some of the things that aren't working, for example, are the vibration controls, NFC, some USB connectivity. So really, if those things don't affect you and you have the Galaxy Tab 8.9, you may want to take a look at this. And if not, then don't worry about it. As always, though, do check the thread to see if other people are having issues that haven't been reported yet. Now, we had a couple of news items come out about the Sony Xperia T this weekend. XDA recognized contributor CrabApple2548 released an insecure kernel for it, giving you root and recovery. And XDA recognized developer FXP and the Free Xperia Project team have come out with three different CyanogenMod ports for the Xperia T. These are specifically ports of CyanogenMod 7.2, 9.1, and 10. Keep in mind, these are initial releases, so like everything else I've mentioned in the last few videos, they're probably going to be a little buggy. They may not be 100% perfect. As always, check the forum thread to see if there's any issues that may arise. Moving away from Android for just a second, we've mentioned a few times in the last few weeks that quite a few devices have started receiving ports of Windows Phone 7.8. Thanks to XDA senior member Cianto1997, we now have it running on the HTC radar. There do appear to be quite a few bugs with it. There are some things like I've mentioned with everything else. There just seem to be some bugs because it's an initial port. However, the bugs that people have found have been pretty minor so far, so do check the thread again, and if it doesn't seem like it's going to be too big of a deal and you're interested, in it for your HTC radar if you do have one, you may want to go ahead and give it a shot. Another bit of interesting news that's not exactly update related, Asus has released a lot of interesting devices over the last couple of months, couple of years, specifically the Transformer series, and all of them are sporting Tegra processors of some form or fashion. And up to this point, most of them have been able to be NV flashed, which means that you can essentially wipe the device completely and restore it back to stock. Or there are some other things you can do with NV flash I'm still not 100% on. It mentions you can actually flash Ubuntu to it using it. However, up to this point, the TF300 has been sadly left out. That is until now. Now it's thanks in large part to a bunch of different developers and forum members, but specifically thanks to XDA recognized developer Rayman who put in a very long sleepless night, and now NV Flash is available for the TF300. Now keep in mind this is designed to keep your device from bricking, it's not actually designed to bring it back from being a brick, but I will say on more than one occasion with my Tegra based tablet, which is an older tablet, NV Flash has saved me on times when I just haven't been able to do a thing to it. Also keep in mind, if you took the latest Jelly Bean update, this is not going to work for you because it uses is a different bootloader. So, as I've said with every single other story so far, make sure to check the forum thread for details and see what applies to you, what doesn't, what you should use it for, and what you shouldn't. And the last story I thought I'd talk about was just something kind of interesting. Up to this point, if you have a device that uses USB on the go, meaning if you want to hook up a DSLR camera or a USB hard drive or keyboard or anything else, you've pretty much had to just kind of sacrifice charging while you've got that plugged in. Well, thanks to XDA senior member Sonic Boom, he's discovered a way to make both things happen at the same time on certain Xperia devices. He's managed to figure out a way to make these devices use the on-the-go and charge with a four-way USB hub. I'm not sure on the specifics of it, but if you have one of the Xperia devices listed in the post, which you can find down in the video description, you might want to go check it out because this sounds like a really interesting way to make things happen. Because honestly, with the four-way USB hub, you would be able to hook up a keyboard and mouse and perhaps a USB hard drive as well as the power connector. So you could essentially have an entire desktop type setup that's completely powered at the same time. Kind of cool in my opinion. That may not be the intended use, but I don't know. It's something worth looking into. You can find the links to that and all of the other stories I talked about down in the video description and over at xdadevelopers.com. That's going to be all for me for today, though. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.